In this Exadata Cloud at Customer quick demo, we are going to review pluggable database management. When we come into our virtual cluster, we notice that there are many different things we can do that in within this virtual cluster like we have seen in the past. We scroll down and look at our databases and see there are many different databases within this virtual cluster. We'll pick one of those databases that has pluggable databases within it. And we can see that there's no data guard, there's no backup configured. We can see there's pluggable databases tab. We click on that tab. We can see there are two pluggable databases. If we go to the three dot menu on the right, we can see the connections right from here. These are our SQL net connections for our pluggable database. So we can connect a client to the pluggable database. Uh, we can do other things from that menu. If we click on a pluggable database, we can now see some details on this pluggable database. We can see the connections from here. We can also look at cloning and stopping the pluggable database or starting if the database pluggable database had already been stopped. We click on the data pluggable databases tab once again. And from here, we can create a pluggable database. This is easy as putting in a pluggable database name. We'll call this one PDB3. If we want to unlock the account, we can do that. We type in the admin password for the PDB admin password. Make sure we get our security right for this. And then we need to put in the wallet password, uh, the password for uh, transparent data encryption uh, credential. If we want to put in a tag for this pluggable database, we can do that with the advanced options. Once this is creating, we'll see that there's a work request first that says accepted. Uh, and then shortly after that, when the pluggable database is creating, it'll say in progress. And from here, we can look at this creation work request. We can look at log messages if there are any. We can see if there's any particular error messages for this create pluggable database. And we can see that here is the associated resource, which is PDB3. And we can click on that and go back and see there's the work request. Once again, it was started uh, and when it was accepted, when it was started in the current progress. So we'll wait now until this request finishes and we'll go take a look at the next operation we can do within the pluggable database. You can see we are now at the container database, looking at the container database details. At this point, we can see that we look at our pluggable database and we see that PDB3 is still provisioning and we're waiting for that pluggable database to finish provisioning so that we can have that as a usable database. Once it's finished, we'll see that PDB3 is now marked as available. If we click in that pluggable database, you can see here that it indeed did it succeed. We can look at the connection for this. And if we want to then connect to that database, that's all ready for us to go for our clients connect. We can also go in and clone this pluggable database. So if we'd like to, we can go in, we determine what VM cluster, we want to clone into the destination database where this clone will be. So this can actually be a local clone within the plug within the container database or a remote clone within another container database in another compartment. You see here that we picked the same destination for this. So this is a local clone. We gave it the TDE wallet password and we hit go ahead and work on cloning this database. At this point, you can see the local clone pluggable database action. The work request has started. And now we're looking at the log message and the error messages. And when we see the associated resources, we see the source pluggable database and the target pluggable database. Uh, as we watch, we can see that the local clone pluggable database has switched from accepted to in progress. And now we are waiting for this pluggable database to be created. If we come down to our pluggable database tab, we notice that PDB3, which is the source of the clone, says it's updating. PDB3CL was being created. Once complete, they show as available. We can now click on PDB3, go into details, and yes, that local clone process succeeded, fine. We go into our work request for this, which is where we are. We can uh, click into the detail on that work request. And when we go into this, we see that the creating of the local pluggable database was complete and created. 
we can go back then to the pluggable databases and look at the details and our connections if we needed to. We now see that in the main pluggable database, once again, all four of these pluggable databases have been created. The next thing we'd like to do is create a remote pluggable database. So let's go ahead and clone PDB1 to a new environment. Instead of going to JOSOE, we'll go to the production SOE database, JOSCD prod. We need to give it the admin password here. Uh, we'll configure a new PDB within JOSCC prod. So we're moving, we're not moving, we're cloning a pluggable database from JOSE container to the JOSOE prod container. We'll call this PDB1CL. We'll give it our encryption password and we'll hit clone PDB. We hit this button and now you'll see that this work request is has been accepted. The remote clone pluggable database option. If we click on that detail for the work request, we can see there's log message, error messages before and associated resources. We see PDB1 and PDB1CL. Uh, this remote pluggable job uh, work request will then uh, be submitted. And we can now see that we have in the JOSOE prod database, container database, we now have PDB1CL provisioning. So now we're provisioning from container database JOSOE to container JOSOE prod. These happen to be in the same VM cluster, but we could actually be moving from uh, one environment to another environment. So at this point, we go and we see that the PDB3, uh, PDB1, excuse me, is updating. It is the remote, um, the pluggable database that we're cloning from the uh, source target container database. Uh, you can see that is uh, provisioning when we look at the resources. Once again, we can see PDB1, which is the tar source, PDB1CL, which is the target. And if we come back and we can now see that this remote clone process is in, in progress and has completed, where remote clone pluggable database is complete. If we click in this work request, we can see, yes, that did uh, actually complete successfully. Uh, finalizing that progress, we can see the, the associated resources, the source and the target. Uh, we go to the target and we can see now that this actually completed and now we're in the JOSC prod container database and we can see that the PDB1 um, database was uh, sure enough it was created. So uh, with this um, we have looked at pluggable database management within our Oracle Cloud Console. We looked at creating pluggable databases, listing the connection information, cloning that locally, and cloning that remotely. In this DBSG XSCC quick demo, we're going to create a pluggable database in our primary database and see how it's propagated through to the standby database. Let's go ahead and get started. First, we're looking at two different virtual clusters, ECC 9 cluster five and ECC nine cluster eight. Cluster five has our primary database. If you look here, there's a lot of databases out here. We'll go into one of the databases that we're using that has a data guard association. You can see here's the primary database name. You can see that it has data guard enabled and it's in the primary role with this particular database. You can also see that we have three pluggable databases available already created in this database. If we look at the data guard associations, you can see there's JODB. It has its peer database uh, in another cluster we mentioned earlier, the cluster eight. There you can see the unique name and this data guard is enabled and it is the standby. In the standby database, you will be able to notice that it also has the data guard association that points back to the primary database. We click on that and we're back at the primary database. Let's go ahead and create a pluggable database. First, let's, before we do that, let's just look at our hosts and see our host for the primary database. We see the 
host one, JODB is the one is the instance. Uh, we go to the standby and you can see it's uh, on a different cluster and it's uh, JO standby database. Within the primary database, you can see the three pluggable databases. Within the standby database, we have three pluggables. Going back to our console, we'll create our pluggable database, give it a name, JOPDB4. We'll type in the wallet password. And when we hit create database, create pluggable database, we'll start building the pluggable database in the primary instance. Uh, you can see here that we have the create pluggable database. It's in progress. We look, the log messages haven't quite popped up yet. We look at the actual pluggable database. You can see now it's uh, within this database, it's creating a pluggable database. Click on the pluggable databases resource, and we can see that the JODB4 is actually provisioning. We'll see in the log messages now it's creating in the primary database. We low out to our view in the host, and we can see that we're in the same instance. And we look at the PDBs. We already have the PDB uh, open mode read right here as it's creating. Uh, now we go to the PDBs on the standby, and you can see. PDB4 is mounted at this point. So uh, it's in the creation process. It'll take a little bit to actually create that. And once we go and look at our PDB resource itself, you can see that it is being created and it's in being created in primary database as well as the standby database at this point. Uh, so now we know that we're well on our way to having a, a primary and a standby copy of this particular pluggable within this container. Uh, looking at the data guard associations, we can see that uh, we have our primary database. We'll click on its peer. We go into the pluggable database now, and you see that in the standby database, we now have this uh, create database, pluggable database in progress. Uh, and you can see it's part of association with the create pluggable database on the primary. And if we just look back at our actual database itself, you can see once again, this was the standby database. It's up and running as a standby. And this PDB is provisioning in the standby. Once it's done, we'll see that the JOPDB4 is actually mounted in the standby. Uh, it takes a second for the messages to catch up with the actual host. So if we click through this, click back to the primary database, you can see when we go to pluggable databases, it's there. It's If you click on create pluggable database, uh, it actually shows you once again the log messages and that it has was finalizing the create pluggable database. It's 100% complete. Uh, you can see this work request is completed. We go back to the pluggable database details. You can see it has succeeded. We go back to the data or pluggable databases detail, and we see all four pluggable databases up and running on the primary. The last thing we'll do is click on data guard associations, and we will go to the peer database, the standby database, and we'll notice that now within this environment that the pluggable databases are all uh, available within the standby database. And once again, Active Data Guard, they're open read only. Uh, this is a great uh, way to create pluggable databases and have them propagated uh, from one environment to another without having to manually instantiate any of the pluggables or uh, do that kind of work. This concludes the quick demonstration of creating a pluggable database with DataGuard enabled.